Welcome back fellow Marvel Legends collectors to my final review for the brand new Marvel Legends Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 Build-A-Figure Titus series. And in this final review, we're going to be taking a look at a Marvel Legends that I never thought we would see the light of day. And that is Angela. And yes, if you're wondering, this is the same Angela back from the old Spawn comics. And, well, I shouldn't say old Spawn comics. Spawn is still going, although not as popular as it was back then in the 90s. Um, but Angela's time at Image Comics had ran dry and eventually changed hands to Marvel. And it's quite a unique story of how this came about. And I'm just going to go over it because it seems like a lot of people are wondering about what the heck is going on with Angela here unless they're reading the current Thor storylines. So, we got to start at the beginning for this one. Whenever Image Comics was made, the founding fathers, Todd McFarlane, Rob Leinfeld, Neil Gaiman, and a couple others, they created Image Comics with the ideal that the publisher did not own the rights to the characters and content. The actual creators did. And in a lot of these comic books, uh, characters would cross over into the other creators' comic books. They would, you know, just like in Marvel, how there would be different characters, or DC, different characters in other uh, superheroes' comic books in that property. They did that with Image, but the creators would still own the rights to that character. So, Todd McFarlane ran into a lot of problems later on with some of these characters that were in Spawn and had such a rich history. And Angela was one of them. She lasted up until issue 100 of Spawn, had her own mini-series. She may have crossed over into some other Image comics, but she definitely ran into this problem. Another character Todd McFarlane ran into problems with in Spawn was Chapel, which was a lob... Uh, La Reinfeld uh, creation from Youngblood. And he was tied in pretty heavily to Spawn, as well was Angela. So, whenever those creators split apart from Image, Todd had problems with them, with the rights. And hence, Neil and both Rob won with their characters, Chapel and Angela. And eventually, Neil handed over, or should I say, sold Angela to Marvel. And now in Marvel Comics, she is Thor's long-lost sister. I know. It's a little confusing. I hope I did a good job explaining it. I feel like I had to do that in this video. But all in all, I am ecstatic to have this Marvel legend. I was a huge Spawn fan back in the day. I'm actually going to pull another Spawn, old Spawn action figure out here. Get a little view of how all these look together. But I was very happy when they announced this. Extremely surprised. I was shocked whenever she first went over to Marvel and what they did with her. Uh, making her Thor's long lost sister. <laughs> but uh, all in all, there have been some differences in the actual concept design of the character. But a the pretty much base look has remained the same. And before we actually get into comparing these action figures, this is going to be a little bit of a different review, by the way, if you can't tell already. But uh, let's get the Build-A-Figure piece out of the way. She comes with Titus's left leg. Nothing special here. I'm not building the uh, Build-A-Figure out of this series. So a review will not be coming for it. But she also comes with some nice weapons. She comes with two of these battle axes. Which are kind of that marbleized gold. And we get some color variation here in the handle. And some nice detail in the handle too. So, unique looking weapon. She comes with two of those. And she will hold them very tight. And her other accessory that she comes with is her sword, which fits in the sheath running along the back of her belt and it actually has some nice detail as well 
And it's nice to see some color variation. A lot of these Marvel Legends accessories, the weapons and such, don't have a lot of color variation. But I'm glad they did it with Angelus. And let me pull the old McFarlane Toys Angela action figure up here. And one of the things that I was kind of upset they didn't carry over from the old image Angela is this huge spear that she would wield in battle. Now she has these double axes, but I really like this spear. And this one is a little uh, oversized for this action figure, but back in the day, all these toys had action figures features and this one was no different being able to shoot out the tip of the spear which I'll show off here push this little button and it fires out <laughs> and also she does have the ribbon wrapped around the spear which she still does have the ribbons in her Marvel format so pretty cool and from head to toe the concept is the same, but there are a lot of differences here. Uh, you can notice that the headdress is different. And of course, she does not have those spawn emblems as the earrings anymore. Which, those were actually trophies for killing hell spawn, Which was pretty neat. And this headdress is actually a lot smaller. And I love the way the hair came out on this new Angela. Very detailed and flowing everywhere. Where the old Angela had a nice hair sculpt for its time. And of course the armor is different. However, it's still similar. Although it looks different, it's still in the same spots. <laughs> she has the... Uh, Shoulder pads here, shoulder armor, and on the old figure, she does have armor going down her arms, although it is more cloth on the inside. It does look like she has chain mail as well. However, this new one, you can clearly see, has the silver armor underneath. And she does have a updated breastplate. And, oh, her face. Um, she does not have that big black outline. She still has the whited out eyes, which I love that they kept. I always love that about Angela. You really couldn't uh, make out her facial features all that well with those whited out eyes. She always just looks stone cold. And the design underneath her eyes is a little different instead of having that black so much. She still has a little bit of black around the eyes. But just not as much. And of course the ribbon is a lot smaller than that one that was on the spear. And I do love the armor going down her arms. And this piece will actually help hide the articulation here at the elbow. And it does have a smaller piece here that can be moved as well. Although it can't be moved as far down. It isn't as big so it can't cover up as much. And I do like the armor she has over her hand on that side and the big gauntlet on this side. And they did keep the same style with this belt here. It's all brown in this one. Or the old one is black and silver. The bronze buckle. And, of course, the sheaf on the old one. And the new. And her tunic is very long on the back of the new one. And I love the detail they gave it. Looks very natural. Where she doesn't have much on the back of the old one. But she has a long fronter part of the tunic on the old one. And down on her legs on the new one. These boots are very marbleized. It does not match the gold up top. I really do don't like it as much. That marbleized look works with some of these action figures, but I rather would have had a more matty paint job down here. And she does not have all gold 
on the bottom of the old ones. Actually has a little knife strapped to her thigh there. Purple boot on this side with another knife back on the hill. And then those outrageous boots that McFarlane would always put on these Spawn characters. But I actually liked that look. I thought it was unique. So there are a lot of differences here. But uh, it's neat going back and taking a look at these old 90s McFarlane toys. I still love them. So articulation wise, this Marvel Legend is great. She has ball joint at the head, which you can get to look this far with the hair, which is actually pretty far considering how wild this hair is. And this far to the left. This far down, which is very far down, but not so high up because the hair does catch on the back. And you can get some tilt more so this way to the left than the right. And at the shoulders, she actually has great range here considering the shoulder armor. Both ends will go past 90 degrees and this armor will flex and this will do the same on the right shoulder however there is a peg here which that will pop off as you can see and then you can just pop it back on. And she has a single joint single hinge at the elbows which will go up to 90 degrees and back straight and rotate all the way around and of course you can hide that articulation very well when it's straight with that piece and on the hands both hands are different you can't get much outward movement because of the glove but you can move it in that far and get full rotation and on this side instead of being able to hinge in and out she will actually hinge up and down. So definitely different there. And she does have uh, some articulation here at the torso, which you can get full rotation, but be mindful of the sword when it's on the sheath back there. And can look this far down and this far back. Be mindful, I just drop the shoulder piece. Once that comes off, it will come off easy again. She does not have a waist cut. But her legs will kick out this far, back in, and very high up. She has a cut at the upper thigh. You can get full rotation on both sides. And great double jointed knees, which will go all the way up and back straight. And she has that great ankle pivot at the foot. And a hinge which will go really far back and pretty far forward too. So, overall, this is my favorite Marvel Legends comic figure released this year. Where Yondu was my favorite Marvel Cinematic Universe Marvel Legend release this year. She's my favorite comic. Uh, just great. I love being able to have a new Angela figure after all these years since getting this original one. I think back from 95 or 96 this was made. It was a while ago. And, of course, she will go with your color top spawn if you picked it up. However, it would be nice if McFarlane would give these 7-inch uh, color tops articulation like Marvel Legends. But, oh well. They do fit in great scale together, though. Uh, Marvel Legends is 6-inch. Color tops are 7. But this Angela is actually 7 inches. And the spawn is a little over 7 inches, about 7.5. So they fit in scale perfectly together so all right everyone this was a little different review i hope you all enjoyed it and i will catch you later